Good morning, guys. Oh shit, sound is looping. I'm eating mom's lasagna, uh, but we'll get um, started in a couple of minutes.
All right. Jesus Christ, I just finished that lasagna. Just a little bit too fast. All right. <clears throat> Current portfolio looks like some things are gapping up, some are gapping down. IFK merging with a crypto. A JFK. Um, I have no idea. It's too thin to trade for me. Okay, let's see. So, crypto related stuff are gapping higher. Mara, NXTD that I'm long. This SRN is now. Wow, the, f the funny thing is, I thought it was kind of a. Like, this is a five star setup, okay? I thought I was chasing. I bought it 829. I wanted to get it like 820 or 815 or something, but and now this thing is, you know, up like 70-80% just a few days. That's the power of strong stocks. This is the hottest sector as a strong stock. Look at how it's been surfing the 20 day. Build the base and then it just exploded higher. Just checking my rest of my holding slip real quick here uh -huh. there's just a lot of stocks that are reporting today and tomorrow um, like growth stocks APT I sold half yesterday since it closed below the 20 day and if it can't hold this $20 area today like I'm probably gonna sell the rest like if it takes out yesterday's lows I'll sell the rest I still have 20,000 shares um, they reported earnings yesterday. I didn't even see that they reported earnings, but they you know, the numbers are crazy, but price action is king. Numbers are insane, like insane. 475% EPS growth, 123% revenue growth. These are like fantasy land numbers. Uh, but again, you know, a lot of this is already priced in. The stock is up 400%, almost 500% this year. So we'll see. Uh, lake. Looks good. A lot of the stocks I'm long are gonna report like tomorrow and the day after tomorrow. One already reported uh, AVLR. It's gapping down a little bit. I think Peloton reports after hours. W, yeah, W reported. Uh, insanely good numbers. It's kind of funny, someone, I, th I don't remember if it was on uh, YouTube or on Twitter, someone told me last week, hey, I see your long W, you should stop trading, or you should quit trading, and that was literally like one of these two days, like the first or the second day after I bought it, and the stock is up 25% uh, since, and I'm up like half a mil on it, kind of funny. Maybe he's the one who should stop trading <laughs> or quit trading. <laughs> you know, you, you can have like personal opinions about the stock. You hate the product or you, you, you had a bad experience because of bad customer service or whatever. All of that shit doesn't matter. Price action is king. Your opinions don't matter. My opinions don't matter. They just don't. We tend to believe they do, but they don't. Just the way it is. They just do not. Riot, I wanted to uh, get a you know nice little range of the 60 minute sharp, but it's gapping up a lot, so I'm not gonna get it. This is the one that shook me out a couple of weeks ago, and now it's way higher. Super annoying. <sighs> UAVS broke out yesterday. Mm, uh, no, it didn't. Or wait, did it? 
Oh, well, actually, yeah, it took out the high sort of day and then it closed weak. And today it looks like it's gapping higher. So, yeah, I mean, I guess you would have... You, you did get an entry, but, you know, with the weak close... Uh, I don't know. Kind of ruined a little bit. But, yeah, it's it's going higher for now. FL cheat the thin stock. It's extended from its nearest base. Very good earnings. Gonna track it over the next. I'm gonna I put it in one of my watch lists. I'm gonna track it over the next few months. Nvax, this thing was insane, was down. I think it was down a hundred like hundred and four or something after hours. And then it went to two hundred in pre-market. Yeah, here it is. Yeah. So it pretty much almost doubled from yesterday after hours to do the today pre-market. Uh, those who bought it here, well, I, I, you know, if you got stopped out, you did the right thing. If you got stopped out after hours, you did the right thing. Because it could have been at 50 today, you know, today in a pre-market. But, you know, you rarely see something like this. Very rarely. Sometimes it happens. But. Uh, this is, uh, I'm going to watch it as a short. I think starting tomorrow, it's going to be a very uh, intriguing short setup. HZMP had good numbers. This thing had a five-star breakout on this day here. Just study that, you know, memorize that setup. I didn't trade it. I was in already a lot of other stuff. VBIV, another COVID name, uh, gapping higher. Doyu and Huya, these are the China Twitch. Both of them, they're gonna merge or something. Fiverr, insanely good earnings. Again, very extended stock. It's not a buy here. If it keeps going, a couple of days will be a good short. But maybe in a few weeks or months, if it builds, you know, let, let's the, if the 10 and 20 days start catching up, there could be another nice base on this thing. Square, it's an extended name, but, you know, it just came out of a base and now it's gapping up. Could, this one could be a buy. Like opening range highs, the first one minute, five minute candle, and maybe the first hourly candle, like if it's tight. I mean, like this is the kind of stock you're gonna risk two, three bucks to make 20, 30, 40. I mean, uh, Livongo, this thing. Now it sucks to merge with T Doc because I'm long T Doc and this thing is now gapping down on this fi uh, Livongo deal. <coughs> but this. Uh, you know, it was a short setup, uh, but now I don't know. EMPH, is, this one gapped up yesterday uh, thanks to SCDG earnings. Twilio gapping down. Like, there's so many explosive growth stocks in the markets right now. It's unbelievable. Just the insane amount of like, really explosive growth stock. We triple digit earnings, tri triple digit sales. Exactly what you want to see. Yeah, wait, what? BNTX? Yeah, yeah, BNTX looks good. Yeah, yeah, it looks great. Five star setup. If it starts breaking, I'll buy it. BNTX is a five star setup. Okay, let's see more setups. We have MRNA. Uh, well, it looks like it's capping down today. AMD is a potential short setup, not for today, probably. I'm taking it off. Tesla, I'm constantly watching this thing, you know, either way it breaks <laughs> this range. DT. DT looks exactly like Shuey did, uh, like, last week. Like, DT puts in a breakout candle like Shuey did. Like, Shuey is riding the 50-day moving average. Had a breakout here, and now it's way higher. I mean, DT is look ex it looks exactly the same. Riding the 50-day and, uh, yeah. Anywho, okay, the market opens in, like, now... Let's see what we get here. I shorted a little bit of Livongo. I was 
daughter. Looks like Avia Lar is losing the rising 10 and 20 day. I'm gonna give it like it's kinda exactly at my entry. I'm I'm gonna use like 127 as my stop. I'm gonna give it a little bit of room. If it doesn't start bouncing soon, I'm I'm gonna sell it. I just bought 12,000 shares of LRN. It's a kind of a thin name. I had to chase it up a little bit. That flag looks great.
guys, just uh, I'm, I don't have any uh, questions. Uh, I, I don't have any time to ask, uh, answer questions the first 30, 40 minutes because I'm busy trading. You know, there's there's no point in asking any questions first near the open. I, I, I can't I don't even look at the chat. I'm selling a little bit piece of GBTC. It's gapping up 6%, just a tiny, tiny bit. I also covered a tiny bit of Livongo short. So far, it had some nice follow through. I thought I was chasing. My my average is low 145s. If I had been a bit quicker, I would have gotten a couple of bucks better average. TDOC is going straight down. Let's see how it acts around this 20-day moving average. If it can't hold, I'm going to get a fuck out. I don't like this candle. Like AVLR, this one is so far bouncing from the gap down. It held the rising 10 and 20. It reclaimed. Like if TDOC can't do it, I'm getting the fuck out of it. Covered a bit more of Livongo. This one is also going straight down together with um, T Doc. Oh shit, this T Doc, I need to get out of it. It's just going straight down. What the fuck? I'm very close stopping out. I just want to see how it acts in the next few minutes. If it takes out loads of the day, I'm out. If it can't literally bounce right here. Okay, fuck it, I'm out. I'm out of T Doc. This thing is, uh, yeah. It's just too weak, unfortunately. Couldn't it have been another stock that bought Livongo? Couldn't any other company bought them? Dexcom or something like that. AVLR is about to go green.
TME looks like a decent setup. A bit slower of a stock, it's a China name. But it's trying to re-break its range. Someone asked if I had a target range for Mara. No, I don't. Just trail it. Use a 10 day moving average. Sell something to strength and then you trail it. Yeah, I will definitely hold LAC through earnings. The earnings on LAC don't matter. It's all about the hype. Chumia, that was a big miss on the short side yesterday. I did the right thing and sold it like 20 bucks or 2050 or something. And then it went to almost 24. And I thought it was going to go to 30. <laughs> but then it faded back to 16. How I deal with stocks gapping down? Well, if it gaps down below my stop, you gotta get out. Preferably you get out in after hours of pre-market. But if, the, if it's too thin to get out or if it doesn't trade in after hours of pre-market, you know, you gotta get out that out of the uh, open. And AVLR, boom, went green on a day. There you go. What what's his T Doc doing? T oh T Doc is way lower than I sold it. Holy shit, this thing is fading. Livongo too, straight down. Livongo was already really overextended. I still I only did ten thousand shares. I've covered two thousand so far. I think this thing could be very easily retest like one fifteen or something in the next few days. Too bad I didn't do more size though. PH good setup? No. Guys, ADR is 2.4%. No. It's not a good setup. Ignore those types of stocks. You won't make any money. You want to make money, you got to be in the fast movers. Everything else is a waste of time. Guys, before you write anything in chat or ask questions, you need to read this, okay? If you already haven't, that is. ATVI, there's absolutely nothing there. Well, what does it matter if this smashed their earnings yesterday? It's going lower. 
Who cares what these analysts are gonna do? The stock is going lower. Ignore what what happens. You know, ignore what the analysts do. You know, all that matters is what the stock is doing. Only price base. The analysts are not gonna make you profits. The stock price action is. And ATV is a slow stock. You shouldn't even be trading this thing. It's a slow stock. Average daily range of 2.8%. You should focus on stocks that have average daily range of 4 or 5% plus. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, they keep going up. They had they had a good setup yesterday, the gold miner ETFs, and a lot of the gold gold stocks and silver stocks too. I didn't trade them because uh, I mean, heavily in a bunch of other stuff. But there were good setups there, and if you paid attention, you would have bought them yesterday. Or even several weeks back when they had even better setups. Average daily range indicator. I used the 20 day. I'll post it. I'll post the, the code, the template for ADR on my blog on the on the about page. I'll post it there. It's a work in progress. This GXS, GSX I was watching for a potential short. This thing had some, several perfect looking breakouts in the past few months alone. Like one, two, three, four, four nice looking breakouts. Pacey is not a momentum leader. Guys, it needs to be surfing the 10 or 20 day moving averages or the 50 day. This is, there's nothing here. It's not a momentum leader. Ignore it. Guys, if you haven't watched, you, you gotta watch my short school, the past two sessions. Go to my YouTube or you, or you can watch it on Twitch. Uh, go to YouTube. It's better. Uh, Go to and uh, watch the short schools, the two last videos I uploaded. Save breakdown idea. Yeah, I tried to uh, short it here in the like high 15s area. Uh, but uh, on Friday it was, I think. But it closed kind of strong. Never really broke down, so I covered it. And now it's back in upper end of the range. These things could have long setups next week, these airlines. <clears throat> Man, this Tesla, this range it's building is just insane, unbelievable. 
Twitter looks interesting. It's surfing the 20 day. Uh, it's a bit of a slower stock, but I think this thing could really go because it's one of the only like software, like social media stocks that hasn't gone yet. And this is like the most, like they're working on a SaaS, like a subscription model. I think that could drive a, it could have, have a big run up into the, before they la launch the subscription model. Like this, this thing, like if they can finally monetize in a good way, it's going to be a hundred, two hundred billion dollar stock, market cap stock. And right now it's not even 30 billion. So I, I am watching it. Obviously technicals need to come first, but I always like to have a, some type of fundamental thing that drives the stock to. Riot this oh well, Riot just took out opening range highs. Hmm. Should I buy it? Nah, I'm not gonna buy it. This overstock just keeps going. Unbelievable. It's gonna be a hundred bucks soon. Yeah, fastly. They're gonna report after hours. I'm gonna watch it. It was like a short, it wasn't short watch, but then I realized it has earnings. Why I annotate my charts? Because then I can keep track of what the stock, the story of the stock. That's how I tre keep track of the earnings and stuff like that, what's going on. That's how I got track of the hot sectors, etc, etc. Was NH two days ago a good trade? Uh, not two days ago, but three days ago it was a good setup. NH was a good setup three days ago. When it bounced off this rising 50 day, look at how clean it is. It's just been riding the 20 day then it kind of pulled back a little bit and found support on the 50 day and then it uh, put in a very tight range here and then it broke out on higher volume this was a good setup very very liquid stock but you know it was a good setup cone cone still in play it's just a random pump stock I don't trade. I don't really trade those. FCX looks pretty decent. Square. I may even do no watcher no never mind I, i'm not gonna do a position in this thing i'm i'm heavily long i can't i can't do it i'm just too heavily long already <clears throat> i mean a lot of things <sighs> but square is the only earning straight today that looks interesting Yeah, I know it looks like a good setup. It's surfing the 50 day. It's been surfing the 50 day for uh, most of this year. Look at this thing. And now it's on the 50 day again. Tomorrow I think it would be a good setup. And yesterday it had a narrow range candle. This is a very good setup. You, you see this list here? This is my watch list. If it's on my watch list, it's probably good.
in my city. Um, nah, uh, maybe, I don't know. It was better down here. But these things are so thin, man. I don't know. Even with someone with a tiny account, this thing is like almost too thin. But it has a high average daily range. But you know, yeah. I mean, look, it, it looked, it looked, it was better here. This is not as good of a setup. It could work, but this was a good setup here. This IBIO is setting up nicely too. Surfing the 20 day, it's been pulling back, going sideways, getting really tight here. Maybe for tomorrow. Very. No. It's not riding any of the moving averages, and it's really choppy. It's not tight. It's definitely not a good setup. It needs to be surfing the 10, the 20, or the 50. Preferably the 10 or 20. But sometimes the 50 ones are also looking really good. Lemonade? Where, where's the setup here? I mean, where's the setup? There's no setup here. Disney thoughts? Guys, okay, I, I already know that. Disney, look at the average daily range 2.2%. You should never trade this type of stock, it's too slow. Focus on stocks that average daily ranges of 4 or 5 percent plus. The smaller your account, the higher the average daily range needs to be. Like someone with a less than a 50 million dollar account, trading something like this is a waste of time. Yeah, airlines could be looking interesting. They're starting to look interesting. They couldn't break down and like on the weekly charts, they look, I mean, they're just very tight looking. Like U, AAL, UAL, Save, DAL. Like these things look pretty good on the weekly charts. And on, on the daily too. Like maybe next week, if we build more higher lows, these things could, could have some uh, juice. Atosa, guys, please put the ticker. Uh, ATOS. Um, you know what? Uh, yeah, you know, it's surfing the 20 day. Um, like, if it starts breaking out of four bucks, I mean, I mean, it could work. It's a COVID 19 stock. It's a bit choppy, like it makes these big spikes and then it pulls back to support, but maybe one of these days it goes. I, it's not a five star setup, maybe three and a half star setup. Now Twitter is starting to break higher. <clears throat> I 
I don't think there is any ADR on CI. Oh, there was actually. Um, 6.3%. The HDBX looks re interesting too. Look at how clean this setup is. You know, had a big move, pulled back, and now it's just surfing the 20 day with higher lows. Look how clean this thing is. These are the type of setups you want to see. Not some random shit stock that's, you know, not surfing any of the 10, 20, or 50 moving averages. IBIO2, look at how clean this thing is. Big move, pull back sideways, and look at how tight it's getting. Surfing the 20 day. Those are good setups. Plug. Uh, no. It's not tight. It just had a huge candle two, two days ago. It's not tight. At all. You, you want to see tightness before the breakout. You want this, this, this chart needs to be tight before the breakout. Blink, uh, there's no setup on Blink. It's way over the 10 day. The, te the 10 day needs to, needs to catch up, at least. Preferably even the 20 day. Nothing there. Yet. GPL cell. What do you mean sell? Like if you're in it, like if you bought it here in the breakout, like in the mid 80 cent area, or preferably low 80 cent area. I mean, maybe you could sell a tiny bit here if you want to, but you know, wait three to five days. You sell a third or half after three to five days, and then you just let the 10 day moving average, you just trail it. Wait for the first close below the 10 day. Like it, this, like this, it's, it's, it's kind of, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start the start, uh, short school or not the short school, swing trading, swing trading school in like five, 10 minutes. I'm gonna go, go through it again because it feels like a lot of people in here ha hasn't, uh, they haven't, you know, watched the previous ones. This thing has insane earnings, but not really. It's a very shoppy name, though. Also insane numbers, very thin stock though, totally untradeable for me. And Beyond Meat reported also. Wow, big deceleration in revenue growth. Okay. You don't need to pay attention to any of this. Um, all you need to do is pretty much just focus on, uh, on the chart. Well, BNTX is weakening. It looks like it's going to break down below the 20 day. But if it holds and closes strong, it could be a setup for tomorrow. Shop is tightening. Yeah. But it probably needs another three to five days to set up. I think.
I don't use the 15 minute opening range, I don't use the 15 minute chart. Packar, uh, it's just, guys, ADR 2.1%. I, I think I need to explain the ADR. I'm going to put it on uh, on my about page. Like, I, I keep getting these uh, stocks with low ADR. So I'll, I'll put it on, on the about page. Like, trading these low ADR stocks, it's a total waste of time. Don't do it. Did UAVS get halted? Yeah, it looks like it's halted. Wow, I don't know why it's halted. Interesting. There is not, there's no ADR. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it, uh, I'm gonna put it on my about page. I'll show you how to put it there and what it is. Oh boy, what broker do I use? Guys, go to my, go to this page here. You need to read read everything in there before you ask any questions, please. I need to put that uh, link somewhere on Twitch. I don't know how to do it. I need to figure it out. There's so many people in chat, like 240, Jesus Christ. Like just a week ago, I was averaging like 100 people. <laughs> Well, no, nah, not a few months ago. Like when I started, I, I had like 10, 15 viewers. But a few months ago, it was maybe like 50, 30, 40. Yeah, Jesus Christ. I'm never going to lose a million and a half again. Or at least I'm not going to post it on Twitter. Make this stream uncool again? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like this constant, like this constant writing in chat, like I can't keep up. There's just too much. It was much more pleasant like uh, a couple of weeks ago. Like a constant stream. Okay, like Twitter is a really good setup. Um, it really is. It's a slow stock. It, it, it's a slow stock, man, but man, I, I kind of like it. Like, look, uh, yeah. just look how beautiful it undercut and reclaimed the 20 day, and now it's breaking a tight range. I'm gonna, since I sold T Doc, I'll, I'll buy some Twitter. I bought 60,000 shares of Twitter. Let's go. Less than a dollar stop. And the average two range is 1.35. So my stop is about, what's my stop? 60, 75 cents maybe? Let's just say 80 cents. So my stop is like two thirds of average two range. And again, stop is always at the lows of the day. Like, th this is a very good setup, it's just it's a slow stock, most of you shouldn't be trading it. I'm trading it just because it's a very liquid stock and I, I can do size. But any one of you who has less than a couple of million in your accounts, you shouldn't even be looking at it. Because the average daily rate is only 3.6%. You should be focusing on stuff like... Oh, B and TX is breaking down, okay. Because MRNA is breaking down, yeah, it's okay. Uh, you should be focusing on stuff like... Uh, IBIO or OPK, it needs a few more days, INO, or LRN, you know, LR oh, this one is going now, like LRN was a five-star setup coming into today, five-star setup, that's why I bought it, 
ADR 8.6. Thin though, very thin. I wanted to buy 40,000 shares, but you know, I can't. I had to buy 12,000 because it's a very thin stock. Fiverr is going to be a great short setup in the next few days. It reminds me about Livongo. <clears throat> and maybe a bit of a Chumia too. Like it's up like four or five days in a row. You know, it gets getting really extended and then you, it just slams lower. I think Fiverr. Maybe if it can hit like 130, 135 tomorrow. And then we get the short tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. FSLR two days ago. Uh, yeah, I even put an arrow here. Yep, this is a five star setup. Look at this thing. I, I, I exactly. You know, this day here. It's a good setup. Five star setup. And here, another really good setup. Another five star setup right here. Look at how beautiful it is. Makes a big move. Keep surfing the 20 day. It, it does undercut the 20 day here, but it bounces perfectly off the 50 day. Okay. They pulls back, goes sideways, keeps riding the 20 day, starts building higher lows, builds a tight range, and then breaks out. That's a five star setup. You gotta, you, guys, what you need to do, you need to take screenshots of these setups. You can't just watch here and listen and think you, everything is gonna be all right. You need to build a short database of thousands of examples, thousands of them. That's what you need to do. You need to actively be learning. Just watching is not gonna cut it. Thousands, exactly, thousands. BGFV? No. The 10 day hasn't even caught up yet. Okay, let, let, guys, let's keep this the chat uh, free from spam. Why don't I show you my... Because I don't want to. I can only stream one, one screen. If you want to see PNLs every day, like constantly, real time PNL, you can go somewhere else. I post PNLs sometimes on Twitter. I show PNLs sometimes here. I even have PNLs on my about page. What more do you need? How, how's that going to help you? Like, if you knew my PNL on like TTD right now, how is that going to help you? Like if you didn't, if you didn't recognize this setup here four days ago and didn't buy it, how is this PNL gonna help you? It's not gonna help you. It's just noise, just a waste of time. Actually, wow, this was pretty good. I'm gonna put it on my uh, about page. Why don't I show my PNL? Let's see pages. Exactly, process over PNL. T Doc, uh, wow, T Doc keeps selling off. Whoa, good thing I sold it. Uh, where did I sell it? 218, I think I sold it. I mean, I in hindsight, I guess I should have sold it a bit higher, like a couple of bucks higher. I, I went from being up like 100k on it or, or something like that, or maybe even 200k. Nah, not 200, 100, 150k to being down 62k on it. But I made uh, I made money on Livongo short, so that's that's fine.
Tesla shenanigans? What does that even mean? It's just in a range. There's no shenanigans here. It's just in a range. It's been in this range for like a month now. SC could be a potential short setup. I'm waiting for this uh, candle to form and then we'll see. Guys, Pfizer is not a trading stock. Ignore Pfizer. It's too slow. ADR of 2.1. It's too slow. When I bought Chumia, I bought it on uh, July 20th. A quick triple. <laughs> quick triple. No, I don't trade uh, mergers. Don't waste your time with mergers. Kodak is setting up. I'm watching it for a potential long. Uh, right now, it's really not wanting to bounce. <coughs> I took a loss on it yesterday. I, I think I lost like 60,000 or something. Oh, Livongo taking another dump. Nice. Damn. Oh, man. I, I should have done like three times the size I did. Mother. Oh well, <clears throat> I still have three quarters of my size. I still have 7,500 shares, closing in on a 200k profit on it. Unfortunately, I gave back 200k in profits on TDOC, so it's not really helping me a lot. I'm so pissed off it was TDOC that bought them, or that I was long TDOC. Couldn't it have been someone other stock? A little bit annoyed, to be honest. <clears throat> Not a fan of SPAC. Where's the setup? Where's the setup on SPAC? It's, it's, to me, it looks like a broken stock. I'm only a fan of stocks that have good setups. All right, let's do a short school. Not a short school, swing trading school. Uh, so yesterday we went through my current positions and the good setups that 
have been on those uh, stocks in the past four or five months. So I'm gonna just open up a simple scan. Let's just do past the uh, biggest six month gainers. Okay, very simple scan. <clears throat> so I use volume dollars, 80 million dollars. Here it says what 800,000, <clears> but it's in it's a, it means 80 million. You have to add two, two or three zeros. So this is 80 million dollar volume. Okay. Average daily range. This is the code. I'm, I'm just putting it here for now, but also I'm going to put it on my blog or on my um, about page. Anyway, and price growth six months. <clears throat> the past 126 days, it needs to be in the top seven percent of performers after applying to uh, after applying these two like volume and the volatility criteria. So then we do a scan. Like like now it's near the open, so there's not a lot of stocks in this scan. Like after it closes, it's gonna be like 40, 50 stocks in this scan. Let's just start with Carvana. So I'm gonna show you good setups. I I can see five two five star setups right 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 now. One is here, okay. You have a big big move, okay. Look at how we, how it keeps surfing the twenty day, and then it just keeps getting tighter. Look at how tight it gets uh, as it surfs the twenty day, and then it has a high volume breakout, okay. On this day here, like this thing needs to be on your watch list once it gets starts getting tight, okay. You need to be able to identify the setup here. This is where you need to be able to identify the setup. And when the next day, when the market opens, you gotta be ready. As soon as it starts breaking out, that's when you buy it. Okay, and another good setup. This is not a five star, this is maybe three and a half star. <coughs> is this one here, right here. Another good setup. Keep surfing the 20 day, builds higher lows and puts in a tight range. I'm actually gonna sw switch to this view here because there's less noise. You don't need to see. It. You don't need to put any notes on here. You don't need to do anything. <coughs> you just need to watch the price. Uh, what scan did we use? It was a six-month gainer scan. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Next one, Square. Oh, now it's fading the gap today. Okay. So Square. How, did it have any good setups um, lately? Uh, let's go back here. It had some really good setups like back in 2017. Here is one. This thing, you know, keeps riding the 50 day. <clears throat> okay. And here, you know, it builds a base, starts breaking out makes a move and um, serves the 10 day and then you get two really tight candles with higher lows and then it breaks out. That's a good setup. Here, another really good setup. This is just an insanely good setup. Like you need to go back and you, you need to take screenshots of these things. You need to build a database, thousands of stocks. Like if you don't study at least, you know, spend at least like 500,000 hours studying this one single setup, <clears throat> it's just super simple. It's not easy, but it's simple. But you still need to study. You need to it's hundreds, hundreds of hours, thousands of hours over the next few years. That's how you master it. That's how you will make millions, tens of millions. With this one setup, you can make tens of millions. <clears throat> like, mm, like this could be like it's kind of breaking out of a little bit of a range of the 50 day you know building higher lows 
it's a little bit more of a subtle setup. Like there's obviously variations of this setup. There's you gotta figure it out. You know, if you spend a thousand hours studying these setups, you gotta figure out these variations. Um, <clears throat> Here is another decent looking one. Like Square had, uh, Square had a bunch of, the, this is another good setup. Bounce off the undercut and bounce off the 20 day, gaps up the next day. This looks very similar to SC, now this thing didn't, this one didn't have that much follow through. Uh, <clears throat> but like this, that setup, that last one looks very similar to SCDG yesterday and a couple of days ago. You had this weak candle that reclaims and next day you have gap up. That's another one. Sometimes, you know, if you have a good looking setup and it gaps up on earnings or news, even if it gaps up 5, 10, 15 percent, it could work out really nicely. I rarely buy stocks below the 50 day. Or, I mean, depends. It depends. Oh, guys, go to my about page. It's all there. My position sizing, it's all there. I've linked it like 10 times already. <clears throat> People in the chat have linked it. Guys, Uh, do I scale in? For this method, you don't need to scale in. You you can buy everything at uh, you can buy everything at once. You don't need to worry about scaling in, but we, you you need to scale out. You you sell a third or half of your position after three to five days, and then you just trail trail uh, use the ten day moving average as a trailing stop. And then when the stock closes below the 10 day, you sell the rest. And since, okay, this is short school. So I'll, I'll uh, instead of referring to the about page, I'm going to say it any, I'm going to say, you know, uh, talk about the position sizing. Like you shouldn't put more than 25% of your account in any given stock ever. There's, there's no point. Like you get the best breakouts in a bull market and in a bull market, you will have hundreds of stocks that make big moves. There's no point in putting more than 25% of your account in any given stock. Okay, next uh, stock, Etsy. Several really good ones. This is a five star setup. Take a screenshot of this thing. Memorize this pattern. You don't need to do anything other. You don't need to know the earnings. You don't need to know that what the sector this thing is in. You really don't. That's a five star setup. And then you had another really good setup like here. Uh, or, well, actually it was a better setup here. Higher lows, you have a range, it's surfing the 20 day. And now look at it. Another one, Fiverr. <clears throat> I can immediately find a five star setup right here. I didn't trade it, it was too thin, but I did recognize this setup. I even put, look at this arrow. I put this thing in my back watch list. Just to track it and look at this thing, straight up. And if, you know, you would have sold, you would have bought it here, you'd have sold half or a third on any of like, on this day here, on any of these two days, three days, after three to five days, you sell a third or half. And then you use the 10 day moving average as a trailing stop. And the, you know, it, it here it kind of undercut the 10 day, but it reclaimed the closed above. And then you can move your stop here. Okay. And once it uh, goes below this area, that's when you get stopped out. So, you know, using that sell rule, those sell rules, you would still be in the stock. But this is something you will figure out once you look at thousands of stocks, thousands of leading stocks, big movers like this, how they act uh, around these moving averages and how do, how do you develop sell rules. Fastly, another one. This one I talked about yesterday, so I'll ignore this one. <clears throat> MRNA. I'll just show you a five-star setup right out of the gate. 
here it is. I bought it, this thing here. Unfortunately, I didn't follow my own sell rules, so I sold it on this day here. And then look at what happened. I, I just thought, you know, I don't know why I sold it. I just sold it. I didn't trust it. And then look at what it did. <laughs> here, another five stars. And there, there was actually a good setup here too. This was an even better setup. You have this, look at how tight it got. And then you have this big range. <clears throat> And here, another five star setup. Boom, look at this. Here is another good setup. Actually here is when I bought it. It undercuts the 50 day, reclaims, starts building higher lows. You have this big, big range. You have this breakout candle on higher volume and look at what happened. Made a big move and now it's flagging again. This is also a good setup. It's building higher lows, has a tight range. Like maybe tomorrow, if this thing can close stronger than it is right now, could be a good setup tomorrow. What's BNTX doing? Uh, now BNTX looks really weak. It undercut the 20 day, but this thing, if this thing closes strong, like closes inside of this range, it could still be a setup for tomorrow. Let's look at another one, W. This thing had some good setups too. Uh, somewhere a bit subtle. Um, nah, this wasn't really a good setup, even though it really worked. Sometimes you have this, you know, some setups are just, you know, too short, but they work anyways. Uh, uh, here is a good setup. This is a five star setup. It was stock that finds support on a 20 day, starts building higher lows, puts in a tight range, and then it has a breakout candle. That's a five star setup. Here's another, uh, maybe not a super setup, maybe a three and a half star setup. Now, in hindsight, it worked, but. And this is one I bought last week. This is, this is when someone's told me, hey, I see your long W, you should quit trading. <laughs> Uh, kind of funny. Anyway, I bought it here. <clears throat> this one I also talked about yesterday on the, on the swing trading school. So you you already know about this one. Uh, Envax I talked about yesterday. Livongo I think no Livongo I didn't talk about. This one I've been trading several times this year. Uh, I initially bought it on this day here when it guided higher, but that's another setup. Maybe I'll start teaching that setup next year or something, but let's just focus on this one simple breakout setup I'm trying to tell you, to, to, uh, teach you. This is like, uh, nah, it's not really a obvious setup. It did work, but not a great setup. This is a great setup. I traded it. Unfortunately, it stopped me out. Okay, no follow through. Stopped me out. Then it found, another, it bounced off the 20 day here it bounced off the 20 day here. Now let's see what happened. Look, look at this, look at this. And this, this is a five star setup. I traded it. Look at this thing, builds higher lows, has this tight range, and then it starts breaking higher. That one I traded, I bought it back. <clears throat> Had a huge move. And then you get another five star setup right here. It, it did close a bit weak, but I did buy it right where it, where it started breaking out. It searches the 10 day, higher lows, tight range, and breaks out. Look at this thing. And I sold it somewhere here in the like uh, low hundreds area because I thought it was getting extended. I didn't, didn't think it was going to go up much more. Well, I was wrong. Here we are. It went to 150 yesterday. <clears throat> Another one, Mara. Mara. Uh, it's a little bit another type of trade. I'll I'll, I'll ignore it. <clears throat> VXRT. This is a good setup. Okay. This is something you need to identify the day before, and then the next day it gaps up on some news. Okay. You need to be on it. You need to buy it opening range highs. You can see, you know, this thing had huge volume out of the gate. I bought this thing. I had a big trade on it. 
Opening range highs, you buy it. Lows of the days, you stop. And then you just, you know, sell it into strength, some, at the 3 to 5 days. <clears throat> and the first close below the 10 day, which would be on this day here, you get stopped out of the rest. And VX30 has kind of a maybe set up today. Uh, it doesn't really, ah, no, nah, it doesn't look that great. Never mind. SRNE. This thing has two really good. This one I bought. I, I messed up the set. Like, I'm usually very good with entries, but my I just, many times I just don't follow my own sell rules. And it kind of annoys me. It kind of pisses me off sometimes. I, unfortunately, I sold it on this day here. Six bucks. I don't know why. And then look at what it did. <laughs> but good thing is I rebought it here. This was, I think it's Monday. 829 I bought 150,000 shares if I remember correctly or 200,000 shares I don't remember but yeah and I'm still long 40,000 shares uh, Tesla this thing is setting up it's setting up same thing higher lows this one I talked about yesterday so I'm not gonna talk about it today um, Twilio another one uh, you have a big move Get shops around for a bit, go sideways in a shoppy range, find support on the rising 20 day, starts building a range, tight range, puts in a narrow candle, and then it has a breakout on higher volume. Now, obviously, you can't, most of the time, you can't uh, kind of determine like early in the day that it's going to have higher volume. So you just, you know, especially if you're trading like liquid, like mid and large cap stocks, like they always have volume. You don't need to worry about it. <clears throat> And look at what it did. And here, another good setup. Really good setup. Look at this. Higher lows, tight range, bounces off the 20-day again, builds higher lows, and then it's a breakout candle. Boom. <clears throat> Overstock. This one I also talked about, if I remember correctly. But this one had a good setup here. Not a five-star, but maybe a three-and-a-half, four-star. <clears throat> This is a five star setup, okay? And this is also like a five star setup, okay? All right, so this was just one scan. Like I have many different scans for uh, different time frames. So this was the six month gainer scan, okay? I also have like one month, three months, six months, one year, one and a half years, two years. <clears throat> and then like five day gainers and stuff like that too. So you, you want the strongest stocks on any given time frame. But as a short term, like you guys don't, you can ignore the two year and the one and a half year. You only have to focus on the one month. This is the formula for the one month. Wait, what? Oh, never mind. Here. <clears throat> so the lows C min L22, like... Uh, the price gain from the lowest point the past 22 trading days. 22 trading days, that's one month. Okay, that's the formula. Okay, so you need this scan. And then the ADR, uh, like I use 3.5%, but most of you, you should put it at 5, 6%. And dollar volume, uh, I have 80 million here, or actually it sets 800,000. But you can use maybe like, I don't know. It, it depends on your account size. <clears throat> Just do like 20 times, 30 times your account size. If you have $100,000 in your account, take that times 30. Or, or 50. Just say, let's just say 50. So you need to put like 5 million here. here 5 million dollar volume. So the one month, you need the three month. So the formula for this one is C min low L67. Uh, 67. 67 trading days, that's three months. And you also need the six month. You don't need any of these others, like the one year, one and a half year, two year. You don't need those. <clears throat> you can ignore those. And this is the, where is the six month one? Here's the six month. The past, the, the lowest price point of the past 126 days, okay? And the rank 93%. You can play around with the volume, 
the average daily range and the and the rank. You need to put a rank. It needs to be like 90 plus, 95 percent plus. And you shouldn't get like after a market is closed. If you get more than 50 results, you need to tighten the criteria. You need to you uh, increase the dollar volume and or the ADR and or the rate, uh, rank, percentage rank. Like if you get more than say 50 in any 50 results in any of those scans, you need to tighten up the criteria. And then you put them all and then you just look for good setups and put them in a separate watch list. All right, enough for short school today. Uh, I don't like talking too much. It's really tiring. Okay, I'm going to focus on my own trading for a while now. LRN, this thing is up. Let's see, what's my average? I have 12,000 shares, 49 average. Uh, so this thing is up 4%. Like what I personally do, I, I just sell like every 3 to 5%. I sell a little bit. Uh, but I suggest for you, just ignore it. No matter how much it goes up the first two, one or two days, just ignore it. What you need to do is you need to sell a third to a half like you could do like this, like you sell a third on day three, which means on Friday you would sell a third. And then you sell a third on day five, like on Tuesday you would sell another third. And then you trail the rest with a 10 day moving average. Okay. Or you could do like, like you sell a third oh, or sorry, you sell, a, you sell half on day three, four or five, and then you trail the rest trail the second half you, you can play around with it like you know uh whatever works for you What about PayPal? What about PayPal? PayPal had a good setup here. I mean, what about it now? And it's also a very slow name. Don't trade PayPal. If you want to make big money, you got to be in the fast moving stocks. Not the slow moving stocks. That's just how it is. The fast moving stocks, not the slow moving stocks. UAVS announced offering. Oh wow, it's still up though. <clears throat> Largest loss and win. Okay, go to my about page. It's all there. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Stock Daddy, for uh, for key, uh, linking AA Ride and Stock Daddy. Thanks for linking the um, and also Big Tune. Thanks for linking the About page. I really appreciate it. It it's really helpful. 
Thanks, guys. Like, I, I get the same questions 10 times per day, like, in the Twitch, uh, Twitch stream, on Twitter, on YouTube. <laughs> I just had to get that uh, about page uh, together, man. I wanted to do it for months, but, uh, you know, I've been, I'm, uh, I'm lazy, so... How do you spend your morning mornings leading up to market hours? That's a really good question. I'm going to answer it on the about page. That's a really good question. I, I, I've gotten it before, but yeah, that's a good question. I'll put it on my uh, about page. <clears throat> How was your performance using momentum stocks prior to this massive bull run? It was very good. Like breakouts, like any type of you know, breakout or momentum strategy you use, they're going to work best, obviously, when the market is in a momentum mode. Uh, and, you know, sometimes you have to be in cash for weeks and months on end when the market is not good. And that's fine. You know, if you can sit out a period like this, and then when a period like this comes around, you're going to double, triple, quadruple your accounts. Trust me on this one. You don't need to trade all the time. It's fine to sit in cash for months on end. Now, it's easier said than done. But generally, what you want to see, like Nasdaq is the, you know, the relevant index. You don't need to look at anything other than Nasdaq, okay? This is like, this is, Nasdaq is where 90% of the stocks I trade are in the Nasdaq, okay? So generally what you want to see is the 10-day sloping higher and the 20-day sloping higher. Or at least one of them needs to be sloping higher, generally. And the 10-day needs to be above the 20-day. It's fine if it undercuts a little bit for a while, um, but you know that's a like general rule. So this has been a really good swing trading market. Okay, during this time there weren't many breakouts, and those that were they failed. Uh, there were a lot of breakdowns though, but that's just another uh, type of strategy. You don't need to do any shorting. This was also a really good market. I I, I more than doubled my accounts on this. During this four month bull run. Uh, this period was a little bit more challenging. Uh, this was a decent period. In, even though it only lasted for a few months. This was a bit challenging. Because you know the market was downtrending. Right? The 10 day started sloping lower. 20 day started sloping lower. The 10 day was below the 20 day. That's not a great swing trading environment. And then this was just a shoppy environment, no trend. And the 10 day, 20 day, they were like mostly going sideways or, or lower or sloping down. And this was also an insanely good trading environment. The first five months of 2019. And, you know, I can go back years and years. So you, you get this, like every, every year, there's usually a three to six month period. That's a bit challenging. You won't, you, you will make very little or no money and that's fine. And then you get these runs that last for three to six months where you will double and triple your account. You just have to wait for those periods. Okay. You have to wait it out. It's really making millions in trading. It's really not about rocket science. It's all about patience and discipline. It really is. You, if you have more than 10 brain cells, you can make a lot of money. But what most people don't have is the patience, the temper, just waiting and doing nothing. Most people want the fix, including me. They need to be doing something all the time. Yes, I use the Platinum version of TC2000. Do you think Kodak might be supernova in a few sessions? I don't think anything. Right now, it's just going down.
Oh, you're wait, short and are you re recovering from a motorcycle wreck? Holy shit, that sucks. Good. I I guess the good thing is you get uh, you get time to uh, study setups. Like really, like what you guys need to do, you need to get these scans in order, and then you just need to find these setups. Just just look at any stock that you know doubles or triples or quadruples or something. And then you just look at how they act. You need to use the 10 day, the 20 day and the 50 day moving average. Like these are really the only indicators I like I personally feel I need. Uh, like these are the main ones and you, you will see like every leading stock, they will find support levels on the 10, 20 and 15 day moving averages. Like these are as close to magic as you can get. Okay. It's almost like cheating. It's a little bit like cheating, okay? And there's a reason I use this moving average. Because the leading stocks, stocks that make big moves, obey these lines. They, they've done it the past few years. They did it 50 years ago. They did it te uh, 100 years ago. How do I know? Because I've studied charts from those periods. There's no guesswork. There's a reason for all of these things. There's a reason for every indicator I use. Because they work. How do I know they work? Because I've studied them. Going back many decades. <clears throat> do I trade anything else than US stocks? Yes, I also trade the US ETFs. Gonna put that one also in the about. Uh, trade zero or interactive brokers I don't I've never used trade zero trade zero is I guess better if you like short a lot uh, but I, I think interactive brokers is really good but I it doesn't really matter like you know you need to try them both and see which one works for you will you will you share you yeah I'm gonna show you like later this week or maybe next week my Evernote database like I have tens of thousands of charts and setups with different you know strategies i'm gonna show you a little bit of it i've spent thousands of hours building it your tc2000 yeah you need to get a platform that does or you just you know need to get books that we where uh where that uh you know show charts and stuff Have you consider, in, considered using the 5 EMA? Uh, not really. Because the 5 EMA is going to stop you out of the big gainers. 5 EMA is... Uh, what oh, is too fast. What caused you four blow-ups? Uh, lack of strategy, lack of setups. How did you get the watch list left, left side? What do you mean? This one? I just created it. I click here. I click here. I, 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 I put the name on it. I click OK. Then I get a watch list and I put it here. This is like my daily back watch list. I track all every every notable breakout breakdown. I track them for a month. Like I, let's see. I, I, it's 5th of August now. Uh, my oldest back watch list is 6th of July. We can just go through it and look at this, what triggered that day. Uh, actually, uh, I've already put the. Uh, um, I've, I, yeah, I'm gonna put it. The, yeah, that's a good one, Budir. Uh, I've already done that one. I just haven't put it on the about page. Uh, you can see it right here. On the daily chart, I use the simple moving averages. On the 60-minute chart, I use exponential moving averages. Why? Because they work. 
uh, they just work. Like it doesn't really even matter what type, of, what moving averages you use. Like I use these ones because I found they work really well on momentum stocks. But you know, you may find that some other moving average mo works better, and that's fine. Like, but you, you, there's there needs to be a reason for it. Okay, 6th of July, had this CBAT had a random pop, UMRX had a random pop, Payway IRO had a random pop, Tiger, yeah, the China brokerage stocks broke out that day, I remember that, Mark had a random pop, oh, this is the day I lost a bunch of money on it, I bought the breakout, I didn't realize they had earnings after hours and I had to sell on the gap down, Weibo had a random pop, Yin had a, yeah, okay, China names all had random pops that day. MKTX, it's a slow, very slow name, but it kind of broke out of a nice pattern, but had no uh, follow through. IMMU, gapped up on some news. Oh, IMMU, I can show you two really good setups on this one. Three really good setups. Here, this day here. You know, this had a big move on high volume on some biotech news. Kind of went higher, pulled back. The 10-day caught up, and then it broke out on high volume. It wasn't a very obvious setup. Actually, you know, the day before it looked like this. Uh, it wasn't a very obvious setup. But, you know, this was a better setup. No, wait. Where's the better setup? Here is a better setup. Or actually, it's kind of extended, but there was a setup here too. It didn't have much follow through. Actually, you would have lost money on it. But this is a very good setup. Had a big, big move. It, what, tripled or something? Quadrupled? Pulled back, went sideways, found support on the 50 day. Actually, before the 50 day, had a nice, nice, like, range break candle. This is a very good setup. And this is another pretty decent setup. Like, it wasn't really tight going into it, but sometimes, you know, the previous day can be loose if you have a nice range. In the same here, um, you kind of have to look at the overall picture. But, you know, if you, if you study thousands of examples, you're going to figure these things out. FSLR we talked about earlier. Net, uh, Nette had a good setup yesterday. It's a very thin stock, but this thing had a very good setup yesterday. This is a five-star setup. And today it gapped up a bunch, and now it actually took out yesterday's lows. I don't know, they had some news, and they didn't like the news, I guess. Uh, okay, Koopa, Koopa, five-star setup right here. Boom, boom, boom. Higher lows. Look at how it just keeps surfing the 20-day higher lows, and then you have a little bit of a range. It was a bit choppy, uh, but eventually it got tighter and tighter. And broke out, boom. Uh, what's this? This oh, this thing had a big breakdown that day. DXCM. This one I'm stalking. It's a little bit like it's getting super tight. You can just clearly like look at this range. Like this thing wants to go higher. You can obvi you can clearly see this is an earnings winner. Big big earnings. They reported last week. Big guidance. Like this thing has fuel. It's not something you guys have to focus on. Uh, but I, I, I like to trade the stocks with big earnings. They tend to make the biggest moves. But the only thing you really need to focus on is the momentum. That's really only. Because all of the big uh, earnings winners, they're going to have a momentum. You're going to catch them if you just focus on momentum. So you don't really need to focus on everything else. anything else. I'll, just, I, I, I'll even switch to this tab so you don't see anything other than just the setup. Um, what, what, I was, what was I trying to say? I don't even remember. Workhorse. This thing hasn't had really much follow through since I bought it, but it is building higher lows. I bought it two days ago when it broke the 17 area. It, it popped 15, 16% really quickly, pulled back and put in a higher low, put, put in another higher low. So, so far it looks okay. Uh, VIX had a big move. All right, holy shit, I'm getting really tired now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do one more scan, and um, these are these are my intraday scans. You don't need to focus on any any of these. You don't need any any intraday scans. All you need to do is use the one month. 
three month and six month uh, momentum scans, find setups, you know, you need to run them after you close, find good setups, put them in a watch list, and then you just have to watch that watch list. That's all you need to do to make millions. Like, I'm going to write a step-to-step -step guide. Like, obviously, and you also have to be, like, aware of the market conditions and stuff like that. Like, I mean, an uptrending market or downtrending market or, like, what are the market conditions? Right now, they're very good. Like, this, the past four or five months has been the best swing training environment since the late 90s. Probably. Or maybe like a second and third quarter of 2009. That was also a really good period. Just look, going back and looking at charts, like there were some insane moves back then. APT, uh, the, yeah, APT, I got stopped out. Uh, let's see what's where I had a hard stop set. I got filled 19. 99 i had five cents slippage yeah i'm all out apt i sold the uh, half at uh, near the close yesterday so when it was obvious it was gonna close at least like at right at the 20 day and then i kept half because i was really like like hoping it was gonna gap up and just bounce off the 20 day but it's not uh, so right now it's a broken chart uh let's see taking it off from my positions list so you know, since I'm, I sold the stock, like this window here, these are my positions, I'm taking it off. I'm taking it, I'm removing it from this list. So, right here, let's see, next video. LRM, this is what a five-star setup should do, you know. For those who paid attention, have been paying attention, like those of you have been on my stream for, you know, months, you know, you, you should have all have been on top of this one. This is a five star setup. Not now. The entry was in the like 48 area, 49 area. My average is 40, 4902. I had to chase it a little bit since I was buy buying a bit size. I wanted more, but you know. I started buying it like low, like 4820s, and my f I got filled on my last shares like low 49s. So that, that's how thin the stock was. And this thing could easily go to 60, 70, you know. <laughs> wow, this LSC, I still think this thing is gonna go hey Like, when Robin Hood finds this stock, if when David Day Trader finds this one, it's gonna go to 2030. Uh, it had several good setups. I had a setup here, had a setup here. I personally bought it. Where did I buy it? Did I buy it here? No, I bought it here. I bought it on this day. I chased it a little bit. Like, this was the correct entry right here, but I chased it just because I thought it was such a big potential. And sometimes, you know. If you made millions, you can break rules, okay? If you've been trading for nine years, you know when to break the rules. If you don't, if you have been trading for less than five years, you don't know how to when to break the rules, and you shouldn't break the rules. Uh, BEA looks like I may get stopped out. I'm actually gonna put a hard stop on it, so I don't have to watch it. Yeah, INO for tomorrow looks like a really, really good setup. It's, it's just a really good looking setup. Not a five star, but you know, like a four star setup. Uh, 
And also this DT, it looks exactly like Shuey did on this day here. Exactly like Shuey did here. This is what DT looks like right now. It's a bit slower, like these are a bit slower, like they, they, you know, you should focus on the ones that are surfing the 10 day and the 20 day. Uh, but you know, I, I also trade the ones that surf the 50 day <coughs> many times. <coughs> um, but yeah, like if I had buying power left, I would buy it, but I don't, so I'm not gonna buy it. But it's a good setup, it's a four, four star setup. And also two uh, that look really good are IBIO and uh, HDBX for tomorrow. HDBX looks a bit better. <coughs> MRNA surfing the 50 day. Uh, no, it's not. Right now it's surfing the 20 day, but it has been surfing the 50 day previously. Yeah, like, yeah, it bounced here, it bounced here, but right now it's surfing the 20 day. If it closes strong, it's gonna be a setup for tomorrow. <clears throat> Looks like Twitter is taking out highs for the day. I, I like Twitter. Like it's a bit slow, but like I'm risking what 75, 80 cents to potentially make. I mean, this thing gets going. Why, why can't this thing go to 45, 50? You know, good risk reward. Like on swing trading, you always want to get like. You're aiming to get like 5, 10, 20 times, 30 times your initial risk. Like the be be best trades, you'll make 20, 30, 50 times your initial risk. You know, you can make a lot of money even if you only have like 20, 30% win rate. You can make a shitload of money. Like my win rate last year, I think it was 20, uh, 20 was it 22%, 25%, something like that. And this year, I this year it, it it's a bit better. Maybe I don't know, but maybe closer to thirty percent. But but you you can have a win rate well below fifty percent, and you can make a shit ton of money. And and you know another thing, you know, there's a lot of these day traders out there selling their subscription services. That you know they claim they have like this. 70 80 90 percent win rates and maybe they have but if you need a 70 80 90 percent win rate to make money i'm sorry but your setup suck your methods suck you have a very little edge if you need that high of a win rate to make money Uh, what was your best month? How much? Uh, uh, my best month was probably like, I don't know, June or Ju uh, May or June or something. <coughs> yeah, Ju uh, no, wait. Uh, wait, wait. Yeah, I think June this year was my best month. I made 5 million. I made 5 million bucks in June. Because the market was just so good. Like, look at the Nasdaq during June. This is June month. Look at this thing. It was pretty much straight up. A little bit pullbacks, but, you know, still. <clears throat> uh, numbers? Yeah, okay. I'll show you what those mean. Let's look at Livongo. So what it means, I'm going to show you. These are from MarketSmith, these numbers. <clears throat> these are earnings and revenue. Okay. So the left column is the uh, earnings, like EPS growth, and the right one is revenue growth. This is what a growth stock looks like. These, these kind of stocks, you want to make go be long. The ones that have triple digit earnings and revenue growth. This is the reason Livongo went from like 20 bucks to 150 in like four months, five months. This is fuel. This is called fuel. Rocket fuel is another word for it. And that's pretty much what I put. Like I need to, I, I like to keep track of the story. 
uh, like the numbers, like I can quickly, if I scroll through like on, on square two, I can just quickly see the numbers. Okay, that gives me a bit more conviction versus just some random stock that doesn't have any earnings at all. Like Twitter, like this one really has shitty earnings and revenue growth. But again, I think this thing could go like as a good looking chart, very clean, perfect tw uh, 20, surfing the 20 EMA perfectly. And, you know, I talked about it before, like this is like the most powerful social media platform in the world. And if they finally can monetize it when they finalize their uh, sauce sauce uh, model, you know, this thing could go to 100 billion plus. So we'll see. But I'm just rationalizing the trade. But sometimes I need to rationalize things. Even though you really don't need to to make big money in the markets. Fiverr is going to be a great short setup for tomorrow. If it closes strong. Like AMD, yeah, this one, yeah, this is the one that got away. You know, so you, you're not going to catch everything. Like, in a bull market, there's going to be hundreds of stocks that break out and make big moves. You don't need to be in everything. And also, you don't need to be, like, ultra concentrated. Like, there's, you know, some people, you know, successful traders that think that, you know, you need to be really concentrated. You need to put, put like, 50% of your account in a single stock. No, you don't need to. Absolutely not. You're going to make your money in a bull in bull runs, and every bull run, there's hundreds of stocks that make big moves. You don't need to put 50% of your account in one stock. That's just stupid. You know, I would say, generally say, don't put more than 25% of your account in any given stock. There's just no need to. Like, let's say you go long Tesla. You put 50% of your account in this thing, okay? And the next day, you know, this thing breaks out. You put 50% of your money in this thing. Or even worse, you put 100% of your money in this thing. And then the next day, overnight, Elon Musk gets a heart attack and dies. This thing is going to be down 70%. Okay, it's going to be down 70%. God forbid something happens to Elon, but I'm just saying, right? Or, or you put something in a you know, big position in some micro cap biotech stock. Like, you know, they have some bad news. It's going to go down 90% overnight. You're done. Your career is over. You don't have any career anymore, in trading at least. Etsy, <clears throat> like Etsy is a good short setup. Like I think if it gaps up on earnings, uh, it could be a set, like a sell the new scenario because it's really extended from the base, like up, you know. It's up, what, one, two, three, four, five, six days in a row. This is going to be uh, like a five-star short setup. I just hope it gaps up on earnings. That would be an ideal scenario, and I'm going to be on it. Um, as long as it, or even if it opens break even. It's just like Fiverr today. Not, not Fiverr, sorry. Uh, Livongo. Like this one also. This one gapped up a little bit. It was uh, up way up. Uh, it was up way more in pre-market. It actually hit like 160, almost 168 in pre-market. But anyways, you know, first, you know, right out of the gate, it put in a red one-minute candle, and you know, I kind of shorted it right there, low 145s. I shorted 10,000 shares. Now, in hindsight, I should have done two, three times the size, but whatever. A really good setup, like a five-star setup. And Fiverr looks similar also for tomorrow if it can close strong today. Like, we're in a runaway bull market, like extremely good momentum market. So there's a lot of these setups uh, coming up. That's another setup I trade. You don't need to worry about it. You don't need that setup to make millions. It's a, it's a little bit, uh, it's, it's much harder setup to trade than just the breakout uh, method I've, uh, I've been teaching you. Okay, guys, I'm I'm just I'm I'm done. I, I don't I'm not gonna answer any comments or questions. I'm just uh, my throat is starting to hurt from talking. Thanks for joining, and I'll see you tomorrow. And I see some people have DM'd me. I'm gonna answer.